So 1967 in Chicago was the Wall of Respect was created here on the south side and that was sort of the first significant and recognized community based mural and that was created by the artists of the Organization for Black American Culture. The significance of that mural is that in addition to the artists that were kind of like spearheading the project, there was a lot of community involvement for that project, meaning everyday citizens would come by to uh, the design meetings and actually when the artists and other people were working on the walls, they would, uh, you know, community residents would come by, help with painting, um, you know, bring lemonade or coffee, whatever, to the artists. So it, it, it kind of sparked this movement of community murals. Uh, William Walker was one of the artists who participated and contributed to the Wall of Respect. Well, he teamed up with several like-minded Chicago-based um, mural artists at the time. And then from about 67, when the Wall of Respect was um, dedicated through the 70s, there was kind of this nebulous group of artists and who kind of came together to form a coalition and sort of support each other with this type of work. So CPAG was founded as the uh, Chicago Mural Group, so CMG, back during those times by a group of, I want to say there was about 10 associated artists with the group at that time. Uh, they had this, this vision of social practice for their art and sort of the benefits outside of a museum or gallery that could happen when, you know, everyday people sort of came together to address social issues in their neighborhoods and through art sort of creates statements about sort of their history and their existence. So I began working with Chicago Public Art Group, also known as CPAG, uh, back in 2005. It was my final year of my third bachelor's degree when I was getting my art education BFA. My professor at the time was a core artist with the Chicago Public Art Group and we had a lot of conversations about my interests so she suggested that I sort of get involved through that exchange. Um, during my student teaching, I worked with a different artist, Mertes Wierzynski, um, to install a mosaic mural at Clemente High School when I was doing my apprentice teaching, which then the summer after I graduated, I did my first project with CPAG. named Henri Marquet. One of the founding members of CPAG is John Pittman Weber. They were the two lead artists um, <clears throat> and I was an assistant artist on that project which was a large-scale playground. It was a, in the shape of a sleeping child um, and then all the extremities of the sculpture, um, the arms and the legs, uh, benches were kind of carved out into them so in a circular form so that teachers could conduct their classes outside with the children all sitting in the sculpture. And then we did community workshops to decorate the surface of the sculpture um, in different patterns to make almost uh, like a patchwork quilt for the clothing for the child. So that was 2005 and that was my first official CPAG project. And my professor that kind of got me started was Olivia Goody, was a CPAG artist. And then my mentor teacher um, at Clemente High School was Tracy Van Dynan, 
who eventually became my partner in crime, and he and I have worked together on almost all of the murals that I've done. And most times, um, I do get paid for the murals that I'm making. Um, again, just like you'd pay any other type of construction worker. So the group actually values the labor and work of artists. Um, whereas, you know, like a, a studio piece could be up for commission or sold through a gallery or something. Similarly, you can't uh, sort of, it. The, the funding streams are different than, you know, a studio piece which is sold from a gallery. So we usually partner with um, uh, the aldermen, government organizations, or other nonprofits. But our group feels that all artists deserve a living wage and, you know, to be compensated for their creative work, just like a plumber is compensated for their, their work doing any other type of trade or, you know, career. Some of the most memorable projects that I've worked on. Um, well, one of the most memorable was uh, Metaphorist, as I was just talking about. So Metaphorist was an entry that we created. Um, Tracy Van Dynen, Phil Schuster, and myself created a, made an artist team, brought in several of our friends as uh, assistant artists. And then we partnered with the West Mis Michigan Center for Art and Technology in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is sort of similar to an After School Matters program that we have here in Chicago. Um, and we partnered with the organization to design a large-scale um, mosaic, primarily mosaic, but mosaic painted and concrete mural on the side of their building. So we worked with 20 teams from the organization to develop the concepts and the themes and the imagery of everything that would be in that mural. And the conversations that we had with those teams was that the center sort of enabled them to explore and express their personal identities. So as artists, we kind of took that feedback and came back with this sort of idea of the the teens were sort of constructing themselves through art, through the center. Uh, and then another super great one, which that was not with CPAG, um, but one of my most memorable pieces with CPAG was the mural Indian Land Dancing, um, because that was really a growth experience for Tracy and I, because um, the alderman actually approached us. We had worked in her ward on several previous murals, and she actually told us she wanted us to create a mural celebrating the Native American um, history and contributions of the neighborhood. Well, Tracy and myself are obviously both white men, so we do not feel as if we would be the best artists to lead this project, but she had a great amount of faith with us um, and so Tracy and I tried to take on the role of facilitators as opposed to considering ourselves lead artists. Um, so what we did is we partnered very closely with the American Indian Center um, and several other smaller uh, Native American organizations throughout the city. Um, and basically we sort of documented and recorded um, community workshops where the imagery, themes, and content of the wall all came from the American Indian uh, participants that were in that. So Tracy and I were sort of like supervising the technical aspects and sort of like providing our artistic um, reference and expertise to sort of put all these things together. And um, so it was such a memorable experience because one, I, I learned so much about um, Chicago's American Indian history. And um, then we hired 30 um, After School Matters students over the summer to work with us. And about a third of those students came from the American Indian Center as well. So a lot of the, the words and imagery sort of came from like these family oral histories from the participants, even the teen participants. Um, and it was just such a memorable and great experience for everybody that participated in that. And it's weird, 
having that role of being sort of an outsider to the American Indian community, but feeling like an insider as part of those creative workshops and everything. So that's why it just really stands out as one of the greatest Chicago projects for me.